Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. So, sitting out here, checking out the, the TV lift cabinet I've been working on. Finally taking a little bit of a break. Um, thinking about discussing what I mentioned earlier in my stories earlier today, which was uh, dealing or working with customers. So, you're a new chainsaw carver, you're a new artist, you're a builder, and you got to interact with people, right? You got to work with customers and you got to deal with customers. Now, I don't say that in a bad way, but I say that in a bad way. So it sort of just depends on the customer, right? So first things first, you know, there's that old saying, the customer is always right. The customer is always right. Eee, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. That's a big one. Really got to go over it. So if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, stick around, because we're going to really get into this. So like I said, the customer is always right. All right, don't mind me. I'm eating a popsicle, okay? Customer is always right. I just, I don't agree with that. The customer is not always right, especially when you're doing custom work it's your art you're creating pieces now when you take a custom order on from a customer who's specifically ordering something they want they are right and then sometimes they are not always right okay so when a customer comes up right you have pieces you've already um created and they try to tell you that you have the wrong price something you have marked for 60 dollars should be 40 dollars or 45 they're not right that's not right. They're wrong. You priced it at what you think it should be. The customer is not always right. As far as working with customers one-on-one -on -one for custom orders, think about it this way when I say the customer is not always right. Sometimes your customers don't know exactly what they want, okay? So you have to have a real conversation with them. If these are not repeat customers, these are first-time customers placing an order for custom furniture, a custom bear carving, a piece of art, whatever it is, because this really can't apply to everybody. It really can. If you're an artist and you're looking to sell your art, I believe this could apply to everyone. Sometimes people just don't know. They have a general idea. I want a carved bear. Okay, cool. Now on your end, are you just going to go ahead and start carving a bear? Hmm, there's some questions that need to be asked. Well, what size are you looking for? What color? Really, let's back it up. What do you want that bear doing? Should he be standing, sitting, sleeping, laying, a bear in a log, a bear in a hollow, a bear in a tree stump? Holding the fish, no fish, fishing pole, you want a lantern? I mean, you can't approach it quite so crazy. So you got to learn to have a little bit of a general conversation, a general, you know, some general talk. You know, just kind of like, all right, cool. So what are you thinking? What do you have in mind? What are you looking for? What kind of style? And normally a customer will respond, or a potential customer, I should say, will respond, you know, I'm looking for a bear with a welcome sign. All right, cool. That gives you a starting point. So at this point, you're thinking, okay, I can make a bunch of those in different ways. You know, how would you like them? And you show some examples of a vertical, he's holding it, maybe it, or horizontal, I mean, or maybe he's holding the log and he's behind it. Maybe it hangs off a tree, you know, so you get into your details and have conversations. You know, in the last video, I said, you are the face of your business. You know, how you handle people, how you talk. You're the face of your business. Don't get snotty. Don't, don't be cocky with people. Be understanding. Be pleasant. Be kind, calm, cool, collective, and be pleasant. You are the face of your business. People are turning to you for a service that you provide, that you've either perfected, you're working on, you're learning, all those sort of things. I truly believe even if you are the best in the world, you're on top of your game, you should always be as humble as possible. You really should because at any given time, you will no longer be at the top of your game. Somebody else will come around and be better than you. I've got new carvers on here that I have seen their work and they're way farther advanced than I was when I started. And I've got new people that I follow that I know have only been carving a couple years that carve nicer pieces than me way nicer pieces than me and they've been carving in less than half the time that i have that's a big deal some people are talented in different ways so 
all in all, reflect on yourself and the way you treat people. It really is a big deal. It makes a big difference. If you're this person that's just grouchy and grumpy and you're miserable, it might be really tough to be in this field. It might. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people can get away with that. Some people enjoy that. I just find better success being calm, cool, collective, being humble, being real with people, and uh, you know, respecting them in that aspect. You know what I mean? Keeping my my face is the face of the business as yours should be the face of your business. So dealing with customers, right? Getting a little off track there. Sorry. Dealing with customers. Customers not always right. Sometimes they don't know what they want. You know, you get talking with a customer and they... Furniture. Let's talk about furniture, okay? Customer needs a TV stand. Okay, well, how big of a TV stand are you thinking? Oh, I don't know. Something about like, you know, four feet long by three and a half feet deep by by six feet tall. That's not a TV stand. That's that's pretty big. Well, what do you mean? I want I want this great big... How big is the room you're in? Oh, okay. The room you're in is going to be, uh, you know, 15 feet by 15 feet. You know, in my experience, it's, it's, that's not a big room. And, and something you're looking to, to get for a TV of that size, that's going to be a very large piece for something for a room of that size. You know what I mean? If we mark it out here on paper and we draw it up, you can see how big of a space that's going to take up, right? Can work with carvings as well. How big of a carving you think? Oh, I don't know, like six feet? Okay. Hey, it might be in their budget. Doesn't mean talk them out of it, but you have to say, okay, where are you thinking of putting it? Well, I think I'm going to put it, you know, on my porch right next to my door. I got a spot that's like this wide. Six foot bear is not going to work. You know, a six foot bear should probably be in the realm of 20 to 24 inches wide at the base. So we've got enough room for the height. I mean, a totem pole, maybe something narrow, but you know, if you want a nice big girthy bear, it's, it probably isn't going to fit. So conversation with customers is key as well. And when I say they're not always right, I hope you understand where I'm going with this. It's not that they're wrong. It's that people just don't always know exactly what they're looking for. And sometimes, sometimes they do. You know, a lot of times it's the first sale. It's the first time interacting with this customer. And that's when you're not 100% sure what they're looking for. They're not 100% sure what they are looking for. So you have to talk with them. I find it to be a really good idea to have a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper and you can rough sketch out what it is that you're going to create. Whether, you know, it's a drawing, whether you're, you know, a quick sketch for shape and design, whether it's a sculpture like chainsaw carving, guys, you can give a rough sketch of what it's going to look like. Because if you're going to carve it, you should be able to do a rough, rough drawing in pencil so that customers have a general idea. I just did a rough drawing for an order. They want a bear that's going to be holding the lantern. They're providing the lantern. All I really needed to do is give them a rough sketch of that style bear, and I've shown them pictures of the bears I've done in the past. So what this does, it gives them an idea, okay, he can he can create all kinds of different standing bears, get a general idea what the face is going to look like, but this is the stance we want, right? Arm on this side, arm on that side, this is how, yep, that's exactly. All right, perfect. So then you nail it down. Hope I'm not going too fast. I hope everybody gets what I'm saying. So... And that, that goes for furniture. I do that with furniture orders often. Quick sketch. I write in all my dimensions on my quick sketch for them, you know. All right, what kind of wood are we using for the frame? Cherry. What are we going to use for the faces? Black walnut. What about a nice little piece up here? Oh, I don't know yet. Okay, so we're going to use this for this and this and for that. Hey, you know what? And then I'll draw in this accent piece. What do you think? Oh, whoa, hey, that's pretty. Hey, instead of a flat board down here, what if we draw in... Burl, actually, you know, so like that's how I end up designing with customers. I know what I have available in my shop and I know roughly what I can get, especially furniture wise. Now, this isn't a custom order. I'm just using that as, you know, a, a reference or design idea. But having conversations with people really, really is key to selling your work. Getting to know people within a few moments of meeting them within seconds or just a few minutes really is an important thing, you know, kind of seeing what they're into, not by... I mean, you can't go, hey, so what are you into? They're coming to you for something, right? They want something. They want a chainsaw carving. They want a bear. How do you approach that? How do you draw out the information that you need from them can make or break the deal. You know, if you're rough and gruff, 
doesn't always work out. Calm, cool, collective, guys. It works really, really well. So, um, but we're talking about customers. I know I keep coming back to the same point. Hold on. Gotta get my popsicle. It's melting. These are good. My wife got me some real fruit juice popsicles. Organic. They're good pop. And they're delicious. Anyway, <laughs> just being real, you guys. Sitting here talking to you as if this is a live feed because, like, I've been at work all day, put some time in on this, had a little bit of family time, said, shoot, I got to shoot you guys a quick video tonight. So we're just chilling. It's really what's going on. Out here hanging out, talking about selling, talking about dealing with customers. I got some really good feedback on these videos helping you guys sell your work. And so I just wanted to continue on this little series that I didn't even plan out. It just, just kind of happened, I guess. Um, the other thing with customers. So new customers are different than repeat customers. Um, repeat customers, usually, they know your style. You should have a general idea of their style. So that's where it, it's a little tough with a new customer that's placing an order, which is also different than a customer who's just buying a piece that's finished. You know, a lot of times the customer buying a piece that's finished, that's where Calm Cool Collective being nice comes into play. So let's back it up to that. You're at a craft fair, okay? You have made X, Y, Z. You have made this, this beautiful, I was gonna hold something up. You've made, you've polished this beautiful piece of cherry burl, right? And you're going to sell it for 50 bucks, whatever, bear, art, whatever. Okay, guys, 50 bucks. Stay with me. You're going to sell it for 50 bucks. You're human. Mistakes happen. I'm giving you this story because this happened to me at a craft fair. Me and the kids set up a craft fair a few years back, right? 50 bucks for, I think it was a paper towel holder I made. It was all rustic and I'm putting $50 on it in the story because I don't remember what I actually priced it out at. 50 is easy to work with. 50 bucks. We had it on the rack. I personally, in my head, in my brain, know how much everything is in my booth. I had a woman pick it up, come to me. Here it is. Hand me a $20 bill. I said, okay. I said, we're a little short. You know, these are 50 bucks. She said, no, it's not. Well, <laughs> with all due respect, yes, it is. No, it's not. And I said, well, I handcrafted everything in here. Um, my prices are what my prices are, and I know that's $50. She said, well, according to this tag, it's $19.95. And I said, okay. So I grabbed it, I looked, and I flipped the tag over, and on the other side of the tag, I think it was actually $35, not 50. So I think it was 35. And I said, no, actually it's 35. And she said, well, you have $19.95 on it, and so I'm only paying $19.95. And I said, man, I'm sorry. Somehow a tag from something else got the 35 written on it and it got re-tagged on this. It's an accident. Things happen. I got the kids helping me. It, it might even have just been me. It was a little hectic, you know, but I can't give this to you for 20 bucks. It's a $35 item. If you go ahead and look, everything else is $35 right there. I, I can't let it go for that, you know? And, uh, oh, she, she was, she wasn't happy. She was being rude. Uh, she wasn't quite nasty, but she was being rude. Well, this is ridiculous. What a joke. You can't even stand by your prices. And I said, ma'am, everything here is handcrafted. This isn't Walmart. I said, if you want a cheap paper towel rack, you can go to Walmart. And and I don't I don't know what to tell you. You know, this is this is these are my prices and these are set. And you got to understand things happen. You know, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm only human. I said, but it's thirty five dollars. You can pay thirty five dollars or you can pass. That's fine. It's, I said, honestly, it, it's not going to make or break my day. It's okay. And what I want to tell you guys with that right there, have the mindset that it's not going to make or break your day. Your prices are set. Tell them no, especially when you're at a craft fair, you're at a store, you're selling your own work. It is okay to pass up work. It's okay to pass up a sale from time to time. I understand in the beginning, I get it. It's really, really hard to say no, right? Guys, girls, ladies, men, you're carving. You made a bear for 40 bucks. You made a bear for $100. Somebody says, I'll give you 80. I know it is tough. You wanna take the 80, right? Prior to that sale, calculate in your head. All right, I want $100. 
Could it sell for 80 and I'd be happy? If it could sell for 80 and you could be happy and you're directly making the sale with no in-between man, sell it for 80. Start there. Work your way to the 100 on the next one or the next ones next year. Make them 100 and a little bit more. Start at that comfortable place. So this is what happens, right? We say, I put all this blood, sweat, and tears in this piece. I know I would be ecstatic to get $150 for this piece right here, whatever it is. In reality, $150 might be too much, right? But $125, I might be able to sell them all day long. So now you've got to kind of think about it, okay? It's not necessarily saying knock your work down, but as a new seller of your art or a new beginner or a new carver, think about your prices. You're starting out. You got to make a name for yourself. People got to get to know you, get to know your work, get to know you're going to be around, you're reliable, get to know your style. And the great thing is people that come back as repeats get to see you evolve and make this even better. And so when it comes up to being a two, $300 item, they go, I bought one of those when it was 125 and I am totally willing to pay 350 for that because that new piece, whew, wow, you've made progress. Just things to think about. We're just talking guys, We're just chatting. So first time customers, don't let them muscle you over. Just don't. Set your prices, stay to them. Don't be muscled over by a customer and don't respond rude. Respond respectful. I was respectful to that lady the whole time and you know what ended up happening? She stomped off angry and before the day was over, she came back and paid for that piece and took it home with her. True story. For real. I was there. It was me. <laughs> All right. So repeat customers. Now I deal with repeat customers that do not always know what they want. For real. They come in, I want a bear, Kyle. Yeah, no, we made a cool one a few months ago. What do you want? I don't know. Now, this is where it can be fun. This is where you get to say, all right, well, I had some designs I've been playing with. This, this, that, do this, do that. What do you think? That's awesome. Because customers giving you the freedom for your artisticness. Sometimes. Doesn't always happen, but sometimes. I love those situations. I love that. When it comes down to furniture pieces and installations, I've got a really, really great customer who I believe thoroughly enjoys spending a lot of time in the shop designing their order with me. And I enjoy it too. That whole time I clean the shop up, believe it or not, I do. It's a hot mess. I clean the shop up. Ahead of time, I got a general idea what materials we're going to use and what they want to see. So I get out the walnut, I get out some cherry burls, I get out some beautiful pieces that I know they're going to want to build with, get them set up, get them easily accessible. Carvers, it's an idea for your logs. If you got somebody coming who's going to want a six foot bear, what do you need? Some six foot logs. Or you need to go ahead, run over to the sawmill or wherever you're going to buy logs and make sure you can get yourself a six foot log at whatever girth it's going to be or whatever you need. If you don't have it on hand, make sure you can get what you need before the customer arrives. In my situation, that's always been best. Now I get it. Not everybody can have everything on hand. Logs are a little bit different. If you know you have a consistent, reliable source, hey, I need a seven foot bear, two and a half feet across. Hey, Bob over at whatever Bob's logs business. I need a whatever, whatever. And Bob's consistent. He's always got what you need, right? That That's a different, different deal. Custom orders though, having yourself a spot to accumulate things can be very beneficial. You know, a painter who can show all their work and show what they can do. Having, do they necessarily need a canvas on hand? No, you can get that sort of stuff in all kinds of places, I think, right? logs and wood and material that are customizable and very specific you might want it on hand or know of a place where you can get it does that kind of hope that kind of makes sense so i have a customer like i was saying we will spend hours designing something now the only reason i will spend there's there's several reasons why i'll spend a few hours with this customer designing their project start to finish with them as we sketch it out and lay out material and size and design and all that because this is a repeat customer this is a guaranteed sale i'm not gonna do like i'm not i'm not <laughs> let me start off i'm not going to spend this many hours with a first time person that isn't a 
like a guaranteed sale. Like I can't just have somebody come in off the street and go, okay, you got time because I want to design all of this. I need to know your credentials, right? Because let's let's think about this. Let's let's get real. If we're an artist and we're selling our work, whether it's furniture, carvings, painting, whatever, you want to know you're going to get paid and your time and your effort is worth something. It should be worth something to you. It may not be worth something to all consumers, but your good consumers, your good repeat customers, your time, all your time is important to them. It truly is. It truly is. And if you have a customer that doesn't think your time is important, they're not a good customer. Guess what? You don't have to do work for them. You don't. So my repeat customer I spend hours with, I love designing with them. I really do. And when you're doing that, you take their ideas. You always take the customer's ideas. You bring them in, bring them in, build with them, create. You know, it's a bear carving. They're giving you some creativity and they're working with you. This could even be with a first time customer, but maybe not hours because when I spend hours with them, we are usually creating very high end pieces that are going to have 50 to 100 hours or plus into them. And then we got to do a full install in the home. And, you know, there, there's just a lot into it. But a bear, normally I can get a bear design down with a customer in about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. Maybe a half hour because I've had people jump into wanting to do a second design right there. So they have two options. And then I, uh, <coughs> ooh, dusty out here, guys. Sorry. Get that sketched up, drawn up, and out to them with a quote or an estimate. I don't throw estimates out there on the spot. I just don't. It's not a good practice, guys, especially if you're doing something custom. You're doing a custom bear climbing a tree. He's going to be five, six feet tall. Slow your roll. Don't give him a number right there. Look it up. Okay, give me some time. Give me a day or two. Let me draw this up. Let me do some calculating. Take your time, right? Give yourself a day or two. Hold to your you know, a day or two, make sure you get back to them in a day or two, because that could lose your sale. Draw it up, get that number together that you're going to need, that you're going to be happy with. Let them hear it. <coughs> Jeez, guys, I am sorry. I'm trying to make this video with no cuts. <laughs> Less editing. Good times, I'll tell you. Anyway, being able to do that... <clears throat> In a shorter period of time, it's going to save you time, right? So designing and all those sort of things come into play when working with customers, being calm, cool, and collective. Customers not always right, but their ideas matter. Their their uh, their perspective on the job that they want you to have to, you know, they want you to do it matters. It's important. You're doing the work for them, whether it's a bear, whether it's furniture, whatever it is. You've got to listen to them hear them out, and sometimes figure out what it is exactly what they want. And sometimes they don't know exactly what they want, and so you're persuading them into what it is that you can do or you specialize in. For me, I love creating stuff like this, you guys. I, I love it. It's not just Kate Chainsaw Carving here on this channel, you guys. I love creating unique custom pieces like this TV lift cabinet I'm working on. I really do. My heart and soul is in this. I wish I could be doing this full time and I, I'm not. My job provides the things that I need for my family at this time. Could I get by without it? I could. Life would be a little tougher, but you know what? It's all right. Do this stuff on the side. And I say that because I see a lot of new carvers jump in feet first and they're going full time. Listen, guys, just calculate it, right? We talked about this in another videos. Do your calculations. Do your bills. Do your monthly stuff. Make sure you're going to make enough to do that. That's why it's good to do a good run for a little while and make sure you're going to make the money. Every area and every place is different, but the way you treat your customers and your potential customers should always be the same. You really should. Respect them even when they don't respect you. And, uh, you know, don't be bullied by them, though. But be calm, cool, and collective. It's important. It really is, in my opinion. I'm sure there'll be somebody else that says something different, and that's okay because I don't have to agree with them. <laughs> So, hope you guys have an awesome day. I hope this was a little helpful. If there's something on here that I didn't elaborate or touch base on enough for you on this, your customers sort of topic, let me know in the comments, guys, and we'll put together another video touching base on it. Because you know what? It's not about just creating the art and teaching you guys how to carve and create cool stuff. It's about helping you sell it if you're looking to sell. 
just keep that in mind. All right, guys, I am open to just uh, helping you guys wherever I can because you know what? Starting a small business startup is it is tough, and there are some people out there that are way, way better, way more knowledge with business than I am. I watch YouTube videos on small business owners and big business owners often, and they, they know way more than I do. They can explain things way better than I can, and some things I've said they may not agree with, but these are things that I do and things that work for me, and uh, hopefully they'll work for you because I know not everybody is here just to create art for fun, and some people are picking this up as a hobby, and a, a hobby that'll make you some side money. Eventually a full-time uh, thing too for some of you. So, you know, kind of getting a little bit of the ins and outs on how to sell, how to deal with customers. You know, that's that's the other thing too. When you guys are working with a customer in an order, make sure you go over everything. Everything. Bears are going to crack. What is your policy on repairs? What kind of finishes? How often should they apply the finish? Should they keep it in the sun? Should they put the bear just in the dirt or off the dirt, right? finishes what do you got to do for dusting how do i take care of this do i have to apply a finish or a wax or you know what is it going to move split crack things to go over with your customers depending on the piece you're talking about so details conversations you got to be willing to have those things got to be willing to put yourself out there in a calm cool collective way so that's it though i think guys i uh, hope you enjoyed the video i had fun coming out here talking basically to myself but i know you'll all see this make sure you guys give it a thumbs up hit subscribe hit that bell and hit all okay guys hey quick real quick don't go anywhere quite yet new features here on the channel i have a store tab it might have popped up underneath here got a little bit of merchandise going if you guys are interested that is through one of those places teespring i think so you guys can go check that merchandise out that's on there available with my logo i'll be working on some new designs for that as well you guys can even follow me on social media links down below i'll have some videos popping up here in the end as well if you're new and you want to check out some new stuff but guys if you need some elaboration or some more content on this let me know i'm willing to work on it hope you guys have an awesome day love you thanks for helping this channel get to 10,000. we'll be doing that giveaway soon don't know what i'm talking about check out the giveaway video i'll see you guys later bye